to introduce our um, Relay spokesperson. She's been a friend for 45 years, um, but I'm only 30. So. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I'd rather not introduce her because the only reason I'm introducing her for this particular event is because she has felt the deep impact of cancer. And she has an amazing story, which she'll tell you tonight. Um, I'd really rather be at another event telling you about all of her accomplishments, and I'll just tell you a few. But our spokesperson tonight is Trisha Hester Willard, and um, she has an amazing story. Trisha's the wife of Randy Willard. Randy, you want to raise your hand? They've been married 36 years. Trisha is a native Memphian. She grew up in Bartlett. She's a graduate of Bartlett High School. She attended Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas, and is a graduate of the University of Memphis. Um, she has an amazing story of motherhood, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Um, Trisha is the birth mother of two children, Jared, who lives in Little Rock, and who is the father of Trisha's three beautiful grandchildren, Hunter and Avery and Chase. And then she's the mother of Callie. Callie, hold your hand up. Hi. <laughs> Callie is a baby whisperer. She is a very highly qualified NICU nurse at the hospital right here in Germantown. And she is um, every day saving lives of little infant babies. And then Trisha has um, some other children I'm going to tell you about as we go on. Um, when Trisha's birth children were still very small, Trisha and Randy decided to embark upon an adventure. And that adventure began one baby at a time. They decided to become foster parents and invited to their home a small infant who needed a place to call home and was hungry for the attention and embrace of a mother. Trisha and her family decided that their home could be a launch pad for children who needed love and nurturing before being placed in their recruitable family with their adopted family. One baby led to another and to another to another. In the process, two children found their forever homes right where their launch pad started. Trish and Randy left out in a great leap of faith and adopted two children who had come to their home temporarily. They crossed racial barriers and adopted two children outside of their, their own race. It makes for an interesting family. Jamal is now 15 year old, years old. Is that right, 15? And Takiya, who's here tonight, where she can be, Takiya, Kitty Pie, is 10, 10, 10 years old. In the midst of adopting these two children, Trisha continued to become the first mother to over 20 children. Woo! them, she's cared for them, she's fed them, she's made their clothes, she's made their scrapbooks, she's made all their first, so that when she turned these babies over to their forever family, they had a great start. That in itself should be the story, but it's not. Unfortunately, there's more. And if those choices had not provided enough of a challenge, Trisha's health would. Trisha is a three-time, it's one, two, three, three-time cancer survivor. Her story is one of faith, family, friends, fortitude, and fighting like heck to be here tonight. It's my honor. It's my friends. Trisha. gave my speech, so I really don't have a lot to say now. Um, I want to start by thanking Jane and everyone that has worked to put this together. I want to thank each one of you for being here. It may seem insignificant, but believe me, it is not. It is a major thing to me, and I know to my fellow survivors here. Cindy introduced my family. Um, I could not have done the foster care. I could not have parented, especially during the last six or seven months, without them uh, by my side and doing what I normally do. Cancer. It just kind of gives you a sick 
feeling in the pit of your stomach when you hear it. And never in a million years did I think it would happen to me. And I'm not sure why. I just didn't think it was going to happen to me. My first recollection of cancer was when I was 11 years old. My cousin Bruce was six, and they lived in Paducah, Kentucky. And I remember them driving from Paducah to Memphis, and Bruce seeing doctors at Sims Murphy Clinic. And I will never forget the afternoon that they came home after the doctors had told his family that he had brain cancer. I can remember my aunt, his mother, walking around with a wet washcloth and just crying all afternoon. And I can remember my mother crying all afternoon with her. And I remember my Uncle Jim. He walked around. You could see him clenching his teeth. And he didn't say much of anything to anybody. But for an 11-year-old and for my sister and Bruce and his sister Linda, it was scary. It was devastating. And I'll never forget the, it was just pathetic, the looks on my grandparents' face and his family's face when he died less than six months after his diagnosis. And I can remember talking to mom and saying, I'm scared. I'm afraid cancer is going to take my life or take the life of somebody that I love. And she told me, by the time you're old enough to worry about it, they will have found a cure for cancer. So since I was a little girl, I have prayed for a cure for cancer. And I really did think that by the time I was, you know, an adult, that we would have that. But we haven't. Now I'll tell you a little bit about my personal journey through cancer. Randy and I married in 1975, and as Cindy told you, we had Jared, who is now 32 years old and lives in Little Rock. We had Callie, and it was a perfect family. A boy and a girl is just a perfect family, and life was good. And sometimes I used to wonder, why do other people have problems, but our life just seems to be so charmed, you know? And I just thought, life is good. And then we decided, well, we could do foster care. So about 21 years ago, we started doing foster care. And with these children came Jamal. He was four months old when we got him as a foster care placement in October of 1995. And then in October of 2000, three-month-old Takia came to live with us. And as you can see, one thing leads to another, and foster care led to adoption in these two situations. And our family has grown and we have been tremendously blessed. When Takiya was 14 months old and Jamal was in kindergarten, I found out that I had breast cancer. My grandmother, my father's mother, in April of 2001 was diagnosed with kidney cancer. They removed a kidney. They determined that she didn't need chemo and she did great. She lived another seven years and cancer is not what took her life. That was in April of 2001. In June of 2001, my mother found out she had colon cancer. So they did surgery again. Prayers were answered. No chemo was needed and mom has been fine. She's doing great today. She would be here tonight, but she had another uh, engagement. While mom's still in the hospital, I find a lump in my breast. And I just thought, ugh, it's got to be a cyst. It just can't be cancer. Cancer cannot strike three times in one family in one year, much less. I think it was like four months apart. So I ended up going to see my doctor who sent me for a mammogram and then a biopsy, and it was breast cancer.